Chapter 6 Both mares now sat across from me on the couch as I finished my story with the visit to Rarity concluding at this time. Rainbow Dash, much to my prior expectations, was snoozing lightly, her wings tucked to each side of her and her head resting lightly upon the couch cushion. Fluttershy surprised me, however, by remaining in a sitting position and being extremely attentive. Apart from a few timid questions, she had listened quietly the entire time. Her posture had gotten more relaxed over the course of the story, too. She had started with her muscles tense and her shoulders tightly bunched. As she relaxed lightly against the back of the couch and simply smiled innocently at me. It was... Well, a little distracting, but I kept things under control. And then I got belted with an apple. Again, I finished, releasing a dejected sigh. <coughs> Fluttish I let out an amused and giggle and nodded. Yeah, I am think I know the rest, she assured quietly. Of course, I had left out a few parts, such as my view of particular parts of her body. A good first impression was what I wanted, not her fleeing in pure terror while screaming, at the top of her lungs, well, maybe whispering it quietly to nearby guards, I appended instead. <laughs> I'd hope so. Your memory would be worse than mine if not, I muttered, poking the side of my head with a nod and earning another shy chortle. She shook her head after she smiled down at the sleeping blue pegasus next to her. I apologize for Rainbow Dash, though. She, uh, sometimes has a short attention span. She appended softly, looking a little sad. I warned her it was a little dry, so it's alright, I assured, not really too worried about it. Oh no, it, it wasn't dry at all. I was very entertained by it, she suddenly corrected, catching me off guard with her suddenly discovered vocal force. My eyes relaxed and I just let a light blush form, along with a smile. As uncomfortable as I was, the warm sensation was quite nice. Thanks, Fluttershy. I'm glad I entertained you at least, I thanked. She perked a little and nodded, looking a lot happier than when I got here. You're very nice, but sadly, that's not enough to qualify you for the breeding program. You failed several physical tests, unfortunately, she explained. I blinked, and there was suddenly an odd sensation of static sounds drifting along my left ear. My head gave a dull throb, and I got the distinct image of a scalpel before I winced and shook my head clear. Um, what did you say? I asked her again, suddenly feeling dizzy and unsure. Fluttershy tilted her head, and suddenly looked concerned. Oh, I'm sorry. I said I'm, you're very nice and that I was glad for your, the company. Does your head still hurt? She repeated. Something felt wrong, suddenly. Out of place, maybe? <coughs> I looked around out inside of the house and felt a detached surrealism. This wasn't my place. Or was this? Feeling sick, suddenly, I shifted sideways and lay on the couch cushions again. My mind whirled as I tried desperately to hold on to something, anything. I was lost. This wasn't my home. Where was I? Things felt flat suddenly, and I started to panic. Was this real? Feelings started to slip away in my extremities. My focus snapped back to this reality as I knew it. Two gentle, yellow hooves clasped my, my slightly outstretched right one. My heart felt like it was trying to beat a hole out of my chest and my breathing was fast and ragged. A light sweat had started to form and I felt a sick heat seep up my chest and into my throat. Was I here, maybe? The two hooves squeezed slightly and my unfocused eyes slipped up the forearms and into two pools of gorgeous cyan. She smiled quietly and made a light shh noise. Slowly, the world faded into the pretty blue tint, my lungs and heart slowly slowing down again. Maybe I could just take a little rest? I'm sure things can move on without me for a while, at least. So quiet. Dancing lights and shifting sounds. A thousand scenes from a play, told completely out of order. Was it a comedy or a tragedy? Both? Did it even matter? Battle, war, and death. My mind quietly cried as it tried to dream of cute ponies. Scattered. As if the light coordinator had gotten drunk and decided it would spice the scenes up if he swung wildly from the light racks. The script director had gotten fed up and tossed the pages into the air before storming out of the theater. I woke up with a horrible taste in my mouth. 
something metallic, but maybe it was my imagination? My eyes flicked open in surprise, feeling a hoof brush against mine. Still, we're going to be late if you don't wake him soon, I heard Rambo Dash say, sounding a little on the chastising side. My eyes spotted her, now awakened, lying on the couch across from me. Her eyes must have picked up the movement as they locked on a minor heartbeat later. I know. Just a little more, please? He's hurt, Fetish I asked. I felt her hoof against mine and blushed gently looking down at her. She sat on her ha haunches at the foot of the couch, facing me with her head coming turned towards her blue friend. Rainbow Dash gave me a smirk before replying. He doesn't look all that bad to me. I raised an eyebrow to reflect I rapidly shook her head. No, he's more hurt inside than out. More than he's told us. You shouldn't tease him, Fluttershy muttered. My eyes widened a little of their own accord and I felt the blush fade, washed out in a chilly sensation. How did she know that? Wait, was I hurt on the inside? Mirrors of what just happened came back fairly easily. I had best talk to Twilight about this, either at the party or tomorrow. Rainbow Dash momentarily lost her smile and nodded in my direction. Fluttershy started and slowly turned her head back around to face me. Her eyes bulged out as she saw me staring back, and she hopped backwards so fast that she crashed into the end table next to Dash's couch. Dash clamped both hooves onto her mouth to prevent bursting into copious amounts of laughter, and I blushed lightly, trying to smile at Fluttershy. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was right, but I was going to let go of your hoof, but you looked so lost and peaceful when you were sleeping, so I thought you wanted me to keep... She started rapidly apologizing before I could say anything. I held my hoof up to quiet her and shook my head. I did want you to. It was, well, an anchor. I don't know why, but I suddenly felt lost, like you said. I'm sorry for losing it. I apologized, looking away from her. Are you okay, though? Dash asked, sounding a little concerned. I nodded softly and smiled at her. Yeah, I'll be fine. My memories are just a mess still, and it seems they're spilling over into other things now. I tried to explain, unsure of what had just happened. Oh, did you get new memories back? Fluttish I asked quietly, clicking herself and carefully walking towards me again. Nodding, I looked back over Fluttish I. She looked a bit jarred, but otherwise okay. I made a note not to make any sudden moves around the mare. We need to get going, you two. Normally I don't care, but we're going to be late to a piggy pie party, which I don't really want to miss, Rainbow Dash reminded us, wearing a grin again, standing up finally from the couch. Fluttershy closed her eyes and nodded rapidly. Oh yes, they're a lot of fun. Plus she usually invites a lot of different ponies. Maybe some pony will recognize you? Fluttershy suggested. <coughs> I knew that wasn't a possibility, but I nodded along anyway to humor her. Well, the library is quite a hike, so we'd better get going, I muttered, suddenly self-conscious of my speed again. I'd hoped they'd planned enough time for me to get there, too. Ha! Forget that! We'll fly there in no time! Remedash boasted, pounding a hoof to her chest and smirking. Fluttershy looked a little apprehensive, and I raised my eyebrow towards her before glancing behind me for the non-existent wings. Not that it would have done much good for me to have them. Tripping while walking at least had the benefit of limiting the distance I fell in most cases. Uh, I don't exactly have wings, you know, I reminded weakly. Remedash snorted and zipped over to the door suddenly. Oh, come on! You're an earth pony! Running is supposed to be something you're good at, and that would can probably keep up with me, no problem. Besides, we need to get some meat on your bones. She declared before kicking the door open and zipping outside with ease. Yeah, but Applejack had been on hooves her whole life! Oh dear, not again, Fluttershy muttered weakly, drifting after Rainbow. <coughs> well, this is probably going to end in disaster. With much apprehension, I slowly walked towards the door, suddenly self-conscious of the direction my hooves were going in. I wobbled outside and looked around timidly. Remedash drifted gently in the air about twenty feet up, looking pleased as Punch just at us. Fluttershy drifted up towards her lazily and nodded towards her. Sweet! Let's make a race of it, then! Ready? Rainbow asked, grinning at him at her. I'm not sure if that's a good idea, Rainbow. Fluttershy muttered weakly, almost a whisper. Awesome! Let's go! 
Ramadash shouted out, seemingly either totally ignoring or more likely not hearing her friend's protests. Regardless, she was gone in a flash of rainbow-colored light. Fletcher made a yelping noise and tried her hardest to fight after her dash, nowhere near as fast. I sighed. Okay, might as well try this. Rapidly extending my two right legs, I boosted myself off, well, with my left while trying to repeat the pattern with the other side. Shockingly enough, I actually managed to repeat the movement three times before smashing into my own right forehoof with my back leg and vaulting off to my left. Sadly, I was a victim of my own success as my successful sprint had put me to the bridge that connects Fletcher's house to the main area of Ponyville. Side note, the water was freezing. <coughs> Thankfully, I landed on my side and grabbed a nearby rock to stop my drift. The river was fairly deep this close to town, but not particularly fast. I managed to wade under the bridge and back up onto land on the other side, now shivering and more than a little wet. Why is it that everything involving Rambodox leads to more pain for me? Although admittedly, that instance was at least half due to my own stupidity. <coughs> Shaking myself off, I let the water spray in all directions inside. That trick didn't work nearly as well as I had hoped it would. Well, I guess I'd best just walk to the party lest I die trying to get there. If I didn't freeze to death anyway. Slowly walking along, I once I realized my right foreleg was a little sore from being kicked, then used his bracing to vault off the side of the bridge. Feeling a little bitter again, I flattened my ears and pressed towards the library, ignoring the amused looks of the townsfolk as I climbed from the river bank. A light flapping noise overhead surprised me, and I wondered if they turned around to see if I had died or not. Glancing up, I saw Fluttershy slowly drifting down towards me. I figured that was um, a bad idea, but don't be mad at her. She loves to do your story explaining your walking troubles, she requested, settling down in front of me. You came back? I asked, suddenly very aware of the drops of water dripping off my coat, and I must look like a drowned rat. Thankfully it was dark enough that no but pony noticed my blush. Fluttershy made a light giggle and nodded. <laughs> I uh, heard your splash, she muttered, looking down at her feet. I tilted my head down to catch her face and noticed she was still smiling. So I wasn't too worried. I hadn't known her relation with Rimadash nor her capacity for flight. I figured she might be upset at not being able to keep up with her friend because of my accident, but she seemed to be alright with it. <coughs> I couldn't help but smile, though. So far, she'd been the nicest to me apart from Twilight, but she felt a lot more ad amiable than the much more bookish unicorn. Not that I had a thing against books, having loved the three Twilight lent me while in the infirmary. Uh, well, um, thank you, Fluttershy. You could have kept going towards the party with Ramadash, though, I offered, nudging my head in the direction of the library and spraying another arc of water off my chin. Fur or coating. Whatever this was technically called that covered me was an amazing sponge, it seemed. Fluttershy shook her head weakly and I heard a very faint sigh. I'm no one near as good at flying as Rainbow Dash. She's probably already there, so... She explained, looking a little sad now. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything by it. <coughs> well, you can walk with me instead if you want, I offered, trying to cheer up. Looking back at the bridge, I frowned. I certainly knew what it felt like to not be up to par and, and unable to keep up. Fluttershy smiled quietly, but nodded after a few seconds of hesitation. Yes, that would be good, she agreed, voice almost non-existent now. Was she honestly getting quieter? Huh? I smiled in attempts to be more reassuring and continued my careful wobbling towards the library. After a few seconds, I didn't hear her falling and turned to look at her. Her gaze, however, was locked steadily onto my foreleg. Huh? Oh dear. You hurt your hoof in the fall, didn't you? She asked, sounding a little stronger but worried. Uh, fall? Yeah, that's it. Not wanting to admit kicking my own hoof hard enough to bruise it, I nodded a weakly. Yeah, it just hurts a little. It's alright. I assured, waving the injured hoof as nonchalant as I could manage towards her. No, no! Walking on it could do more damage! Fluttershy warned, looking horrified at my casual treatment of the wound. <coughs> I 
I blinked and looked around, wondering if she wanted me to take a nap in the street at night. But I kind of need to walk on it in order to get back to the library, right? It's not that I started to point out, but trailed off as she took to the air again. I was about to ask her what she was doing when she drifted over me and lowered again. My eyes widened as I realized what she was doing a few seconds too late, and her forelegs wrapped around my chest from above, lifting me up carefully. I dangled there, unsure of what to do for several seconds before she slid her left foot down my chest and supported my stomach, holding me against her body as she put more power into her wings. Just try to, um, r relax, okay? She requested as she started slowly shifting her weight, and we moved in the direction of the library, my feet still dragging along the ground. Uh... Are you sure this is a good idea? I asked her as our movement slowed and I b heard her groan, trying to get more air. Um, yes, of course. If Rainbow Dash can carry four ponies at once, I have to be able to carry at least one. She muttered quietly, straining and starting to drift sideways before hitting. Wow, stallions are heavier than mares. Four ponies? All new fear of the blue and rainbow pegasus flooded into my mind as I briefly pictured her, casually carrying me up to the stratosphere and just laughing as she let me fall. Note to self, do not piss her off. Thankfully, Flush, I didn't seem to notice my shocked expression. Swallowing, I watched us drift to the left, not really gaining much forward momentum as she attempted to balance herself to my awkward weight. My eyes widened as she headed towards the base of the bridge at higher and higher velocity. Oh dear! Flutter I squeaked as she veered hard to the right to correct the shift. We slowed just in time for me to stick my back leg out and brace against the side of the bridge, and I gulped. Then I realized she had overcorrected and veered almost sideways in the other direction. I managed to land the same hoof I used to brace against the bridge on a rock as we came in. Seeing what was about to happen, I bit the bullet and pushed off it, sending me under Flutter as she yelped. I landed on a bigger rock, stomach first, and she smashed into my back before we both lost balance and tipped off into the stream. At least the water was much warmer the second time I landed in it. I'm still so sorry, though. Fluttershy squeaked as she finished clamping the bandage wraps around my side. Aside from some bruising, I didn't think I damaged anything when I hit the rock, but the stuff she put on made it feel a lot better. I shook my head gently at her. Fluttershy, it's alright. I'm not that hurt, and neither are you, so all that happened is that we're going to be a few more minutes late to the party, I consoled, smiling at her. Her much longer mane was wrapped up in a towel bun while I just had a towel draped over my head. We stood in her bathroom as she adjusted the size of the bandage around my torso. <coughs> she looked up at me, still looking quite sad. You were already injured, too. I knew I wasn't going to be able to carry you, but... but she groaned weakly, losing her voice rapidly. But you felt like trying to emulate Rainbow Dash. I know. I finished, still smiling at her. They really were best friends. Fluttershy sighed airily and sat down on her haunches again, rubbing her second towel up and down her coat and over her wings. Sometimes I wish I fit in with the other Pegasi more. I'm not as brave or strong as Rainbow Dash, and it's hard for me to keep up sometimes, she admitted, eyes softening. That feeling rung true to me, and I could definitely relate. Fitting in with this world was a little tricky for a newcomer. I'm having difficulty fitting in too, so I know what you mean. But you're already Fluttershy, right? You don't need to be Rainbow Dash in order to fit in anymore, I reasoned, wishing I was already some pony too. Pity dimensional or planetary travel doesn't come with travel agents to set things up ahead of time for you, it seemed. Flush I frowned and stared absently at my right foreleg, or more accurately, through it, as she seemed to be deep in thought. I, I know who I am and what I like. You're right. She just slowly accepted, giving a quiet nod. Rainbow couldn't have bandaged my chest like this or even made that amazing soft stuff you put on it to begin with, I pointed out, shifting my torso around for emphasis. It made a warm, tingling sensation go down my chest, and I flushed out the feeling of the cream under the bandages. What was this stuff? Fluttershy giggled suddenly, and I suddenly he caught her looking at my expression. It, um, promotes blood flow to the area. 
Bad for cuts, good for sore muscles and bruises, she explained, a light blush going into her cheeks as she stared at the bandage on my chest. <coughs> Giving a warm smile, I complimented, Wow, you really know your stuff. I tried to catch her eyes as she suddenly dropped her head, her entire face going scarlet. She didn't take compliments well, I noted. But giving them to her made her look so adorable. I discovered that I got rapidly addicted. Trying to peek under her newly fallen bangs from her mane, coming partially out of the towel wrap, I got her to squeak suddenly. She scampered around me out of the bathroom, fast on her as she could move. Flushing again, I wondered if I had done something wrong. I still didn't know much about their culture, so maybe I was being taboo again? Sighing weakly, I turned around and walked out of her bathroom. The main room of her house was flooded with all assortments of animal related objects, which I was which I had only skimmed over earlier while relaying my story. She definitely liked animals. By the time I got downstairs, I was surprised to see that she was waiting for me at the door. I figured she'd be halfway to twilight's given the speech she left the bathroom. She smiled shyly at me, however, and turned to face outside, watching me over her shoulder. I tried to a little faster to catch up, composing myself. Getting flustered at her cuteness and wiping out would be more than a little embarrassing. Ah, sorry for being so slow. I apologized upon reaching the door, wincing as I slowed to a stop again. My forward ankle was still bothering me, it seemed. Flush, I shook her head and peeked down at my hoof again. I couldn't let you walk by yourself with that hoof. Besides, I like things nice and slow, she replied gently, looking back up at my face after a few seconds. She still wore a meek smile as she walked around me and got on my right si and got to my right side instead. Hmm? Is something wrong? I asked her, curious now. Oh no, what did I do wrong now? Even back in my past life, I had a sneaking suspicion the more minute details of social interaction eluded me. In this reasonable new place, they were even harder to keep track of. <coughs> Fluttershy bent down to peek at my ankle instead dropping her shoulders to get a better look. I tried really, really hard not to stare at her flanks that were now elevated in the air. It looks like it's starting to swell a little. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not good. We need you to get you off that hoof as soon as possible, she warned. I swallowed weakly. Figured as much. Well, I can rest at the party, right? I reasoned, assuming she'd been to one of these parties before. Of course she had. She'd said so earlier so she knew what to expect, right? Fluttershy nodded and smiled gently at me. Of course. Pinkie Pie is usually more active, but I'll tell her off if she tries to make you stand or anything, she assured. I snickered, trying to imagine a bold version of the yellow pegasus in front of me and failed terribly. Tell her off, huh? That would almost be worth it to see, but I didn't want to press my luck. Very well. We should probably get going, then. We're, what, 20 minutes late? I tried to estimate, looking up towards the lowering sun in terms to estimate the time passage. A personal watch was high up on my list of priorities to get once I got actual bits. <coughs> About half an hour by the time we get there. I am c kinda don't want to tell them that we fell in the stream, she suddenly muttered, flushing and looking apprehensive. I laughed and pointed out, <laughs> you know, it's probably better than the alternative. I instantly regretting s regretted saying it. Oh, great. Now she's going to think I'm a pervert. What would that be? She asked curiously, tilting her head at me. Oh, thank you, whoever was in charge of this messed up universe. She was extremely innocent, which definitely played to my interest in this case, of not being executed, of course. Oh, well, I'm having a bad sense of time or direction? I offered, trying my hardest to smile at her. She exhaled gently as and looked suddenly relieved. Whew. I thought you were insinuating to think we were l lovers or something, she muttered, shaking the blush out of her face as she started to move forward again. In surprise, I tripped over my own hooves again and ended up running my muzzle into the loose dirt of her walkway. Okay, not as innocent as I anticipated. Oh no, I I'm so sorry. Did I surprise you? Was it your ankle? She suddenly asked, immediately helping me back up from hooves. No, no, I I'm alright. Just got a little uh, dizzy there, I lied, head swimming still. Being pelted by apples, falling off a hill, and almost drowning in the stream of force through my mind as I concentrated on anything but the yellow mare next to me. Oh, of course. 
I'm sorry. I forgot about your hoof. Here, she offered, and suddenly dipped sideways. My blush magnified, and the battle in my mind became an uphill one as she pushed the left side of her body into my right, folding her wing over my back and helping me lift my right foot off the ground. Here, we'll keep the pressure off it this way, she explained, nodding and smiling meekly up at me. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you, I muttered, sounding extremely self-conscious. Both of us blushed and looked away from each other for a moment or so. I was the first to break silence by gently hobbling forwards again, gaining support on my right side using her. You don't need to um, thank me. I love helping, especially those that need it, she added, slowly keeping pace with me. You do seem to. All of the animals seem to instinctively love you, I remembered, thinking all the birds gravitating towards her house earlier. She giggled, her flush fading now and seemingly getting a little more secure footing in the conversation. I love animals, most of all. I'm, well, kind of a strange Pegasus like that. Most love flying and being in the sky, but I'd prefer to stay near the ground with all my lovely animal friends. She explained, eyes softening in what were probably fond memories. I nodded gently and picked up my pace slightly, feeling a little more confident in my walking now. I was able to tuck my leg up as if pretending to kick something with our height difference. And with our height difference, it slipped right between her extended wing and shoulder blade, holding it in place as she probably intended. Her wing was amazingly soft, but surprisingly tough. Even though she couldn't lift me earlier, I still felt the missiles rippling through it as she held my leg in place. Of course, she did regularly lift herself and tie off the ground with them, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Strange isn't a bad thing, I've learned. I haven't met a normal pony yet, yet they'd probably be nowhere near as fun to beat around. Love and help individuals should be cherished, I returned, smiling gently. Maybe if there had been more like that in my world, I'd still have a world. Of course, then I would have never met these amazing ponies. Of course, some would have preferred that, I decided, remembering Applejack. I felt her nod against my shoulder. You're very open-minded. I wish I had known you a long time ago, honestly. I have been teased quite a bit about my uh, habits, she wished, sounding a little sad. Sighing, I knew again what she was talking about. I didn't feel like I fit into the norm anywhere at this point. Most people are just insecure about who they are. Seeing people different to themselves makes them scared, so they ridicule them in order to hide that, I reasoned. <coughs> um, what's people? She asked suddenly, looking back up at me. Oh. Oh, crap. Oh, I'm sorry. Ponies. I corrected suddenly, feeling the blood rush out of my head this time. She raised an arrow towards me, but turned away after a few intense seconds. Oh, well, that does make sense, she agreed quietly, suddenly distracted. Swallowing, I decided not to provoke her thoughts further. We walked in silence for our old little ways, and I looked up at the slowly darkening sky. <sighs> it was so beautiful here. Most ponies here probably took it for granted, but from what was left of my memories of my old world, this place is heaven. Maybe it really was heaven? You came from a really bad place, didn't you? She suddenly asked, sounding a little edgy again. For a moment, I wasn't sure how to reply to that. I eventually just settled for the truth. I don't remember much of it at all, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't a pleasant place, yes. She seemed to think for a few moments. She wasn't asking the question I thought she was going to ask, and it was making me a tad uneasy. If, um, if you get your memories back... Are you going to go back there? She finally asked, getting a bit more strength to her voice. She looked back up to me and asked as she asked it, but I couldn't read her expression properly. Uh, well, I don't think there's much left there for me anymore. So no, I, I'll probably stay here. This town seems pleasant, I replied, realizing I, may, I had made that decision a while ago. Stay in heaven or return to hell. Well, that was a choice that was delightfully simple. Kind of refreshing. Her sudden smile caught me totally off guard, however. I'm glad. I'd, uh, like to become better friends with you, she muttered, blushing lightly again and looking down. My heart skipped a beat, and I swore for a second that I swallowed it. Uh, I'd like to get to know you a little bit better, too, Fluttershy. 
I decided, joining in a blush. Both of us probably looked pretty silly at this point. With both of us looking down, we almost walked directly into Twilight's door. Thankfully, it was open, or that might have hurt a little more. Wait, we were here already? Dang, I was enjoying the walk with her, I supposed. Further away. The door was open? Ah! Are you getting a lovey dovey with Fluttershy too? I heard the pink one suddenly ask from particularly right in front of us. Crap! Pinkie Pie! Fluttershy let out a startled squeak and slid away from me as if I was on fire, now deeply flushed. Crap, my support! Suddenly finding myself tipping sideways, my eyes widened as I tried rapidly to bring my right my front right hoof down again. It cracked against the cobblestone and the nail of white hopping flashed up my leg. I yelped and instantly retracting it before remembering the whole reason I brought it down again. Far too late at this point, I simply planted my face onto the cobblestone instead. Ooh, his hoof was burnt. My bad, Piggy replied, giggling at my now fallen form. She was a monster. Uh, um, are you okay? Fred asked rapidly, kneeling down and trying to help pull me to my feet again. <coughs> uh, he'll be so extra super duper fine once he's at this party. Let's go! Pinky suddenly declared. Before I could do so much as protest, I was hauled entirely out of my prone form and I was being pulled across the main library room at high velocity. There was a sudden sensation of vertigo as I felt my stomach drop out, but before I could so much as react, I landed on the cushion of a couch near the main table. It had been decorated with banners and balloons and was sporting a massive amount of sweet treats on it, of all assorted shapes and sizes. The pink monster stood up on the table then, puffing proudly as she motioned towards me. I suddenly realized I had no idea how she got me to the couch. And now the guest of honor has arrived! He's new to Ponyville and it's going to be our a new bestest most awesome friend to every pony! She shouted out, sounding ecstatic. Her grinning face would surely haunt my dreams from this day on. There was a burst of streamers and cheering as I suddenly realized how many ponies there were packed into the library. They blurred together, a miasma of colors as three cookies were probably shoved down my throat, to where I thought I'd almost digest Pinky's hoof along with them. I already caught my eye with a sympathetic look off to my right, and Sweetie Belle gave a snickering motion beside her. I feel that like I recognized the scootle burst into the laughter next to her, not even trying to hide it. Pinkie Pie, victorious, gave a delighted spin on one hoof still on the table and inhaled a small cake that was across from me in one bite. My eyes widened as I was so distended, similar to a snake, and I saw the lump of that of what was in of what was the cake sink into her tiny body. On second thought, that would be what would haunt my dreams for the rest of my life, for sure. Coughing and hacking dryly, I could have sworn I saw a couple cookie crumbs bounce away from me on the table. Was this some sort of vile haziness or something? Gasping for air, I looked around the room only to see that several ponies had already broken into groups and were talking. Did that mean it was over? Pig I flopped into the couch section next to me and smiled gleefully. You're so interesting! I've never met a pony who couldn't remember anything before, so I was extra, extra excited and baked all these for tonight's celebration. I want you to feel all welcome and stuff, she spelled out, almost faster than I could keep up with. My eyes roamed at the table. I was surprised at the variety and sheer amount of treats on it. Cupcakes, candies, puddings, chips. The table was filled to the brim, minus the treats she had launched across the room when she used it for a makeshift stage, of course. I was impressed. Maybe she wasn't so bad after all? Um, thank you. I tried to mutter, feeling embarrassed now. She smiled mirthfully at me before sliding a tray f of colorful cupcakes over me before nodding. <coughs> No problemo. I just want to be bestest friends after all. Try some of my newest recipe. I made them just for you, she offered. I looked down at the pretty cupcakes. They were obviously chocolate, with a white frosting on top. The frosting had another layer of very nicely designed rainbow swirls on top of the white. I was instantly reminded of Rainbow Dash herself and chuckled. I wondered if she was the inspiration for the treat or something. Rare Pinky watching what could only be described as fascination picked up the closest cupcake to me, peeled the wrapper and back and a bit with my teeth and took a bite out of it carefully. Much to my surprise, it tasted quite good. She was an excellent baker. Some sort of strawberry jam filled the chocolate caking and the top was a blend of flavors. She let out a coo of delight as a smile nodded towards her. You like it? Awesome! Hey, does it taste like rainbows? She asked suddenly, grinning at me again. 
A sudden sense of horror and dread came over me. Oh no. What did you put into this cupcake? The twinkling in her eye burned into my soul and I braced for the worst, painfully swallowing. A sudden impact on my right side made me lurch, almost coughing up the accursed thing. Glaring to my right after dismissing thoughts of it somehow trying to get out of my stomach, I found Rainbow Dash sitting on my other side. You know, cause I licked it all over before she put the frosting on, she added, winking. The blush flooded to my face instantly and I started coughing uncontrollably. Both Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie burst into laughter to either side of me and bumped hooves in front of my face as if congratulating each other. <coughs> Why? I managed to cough out, glaring back at Pinkie. But that would be like she... She just patted my muzzle affectionately, though smirking still. Oh, relax, Mr. Pony. It was just a joke, she assured, earning an eye roll from me. Yeah, we wouldn't really do that to you. Jeez, I mean, ew. Rainbow Dash started. I looked back at her and saw the but she continued. That would be like kissing you. I stared at her for a long moment. Her disgusting look carried over from prior. Ew? A cold sensation dripped down my chest and pooled around my stomach. <sighs> Finding myself unable to say anything, I just looked away from her back at the table. Before either could continue, I was pulled backwards by a purple glow, up and over the couch. My eyes widened, but I was placed down gently next to Rarity instead. Just ignore these unsophisticated, insensitive brutes. They pull these uncivilized shenanigans on every pony. She comforted. Sudabelle nodded politely in agreement before giving me a gentle hug on the foreleg. A bit of warmth returned to me at her display, and I smiled down at her, lightly hugging her back with my right foreleg, which was still free. Hey, it was funny! Scootaloo defended, smiling back at Ramadash, who was glaring at Rarity. After a few seconds, Sudabelle sat back suddenly and looked up at my chest. Wait, why are you all bandaged up like that? She asked, tilting her head at me. Rarity broke away from her glare duel with Rainbow and quizzically turned to look at me. Her eyes roamed over the bandages, swelled ankle, and now scuffed up muzzle from the cobblestone. Oh my, what happened to you? She asked, suddenly quite surprised. <coughs> yeah, you look like you got run over by a field plow, Scootaloo agreed, snickering in amusement. I gave her an annoyed glare before sighing and turning back to Rarity. Fluttershy walked up and sat next to her, however, interrupting with, we had a little accident on the way over here, and I tried to bandage him up a bit. Her voice was quiet, but still stronger than when it was just us. Suddenly I was envious, Verdi. I must be great friends. I was a new pony in town, though. My thoughts drifted back to Rainbow again, my eyes softened. Why was I thinking this anyway? Sure, I wasn't expecting her to like the thought of kissing me. Well, I didn't think it could hurt, but honestly, she didn't know me. She wasn't... So wasn't her reaction normal? Then it was my reaction that wasn't normal. I felt confused again and a little lost. I guess I was never very good at evaluating myself. And then he managed to get out of this dream. He protected me from the rock. Fluttershy concluded. Oops. I hadn't realized she was talking the whole time. Wait, she told Rarity? Well, he truly is a gentle cult then. I'm impressed. You really should be more careful, though, Fluttershy idea, Rarity decided, smiling at Fluttershy instead, who blushed lightly and nodded. Sweetie Belle nudged Scootaloo and grinned. See? I told you she, he was a good pony, she rubbed in, winking at her friend. Scootaloo rolled her eyes and crossed her foreleg, sitting on her haunches. I never said he wasn't. I just said he was a klutz, which he still is. Applejack is the one who thinks he's nuts, she denied. Thanks for the vote of confidence, I think. I muttered, trying not to feel the twinge of pain run through me at the reminder of Applejack. <coughs> Scootaloo snickered and grinned up at me instead, eyes cracking a little. Relax, relax. I put one with Sweetie Belle dig you, and any pony who's alright with them is alright by me. You're cool enough, she assured, looking amused. Before I could answer, Sweetie Belle cooed gently and went back to squeezing my foreleg. Don't listen to her. You're super cool, she approved. Fluttershy and Rarity both smiled down at her gently, and Scootaloo made a gagging motion with her hoof. I patted Sweetie Belle gently on the head with my right unused hoof, careful to mind the pain dancing along its cell. And very good with falls, Fluttershy added, smiling up at me as well. I blushed lightly, unused to the compliments. Maybe I was more similar to her than I thought.
Rarely let out a polite giggle. I seem to recall saying that earlier today. I've heard him about job full sitting as well, she remarked. Fluttershy giggled. There are a handful, but I think we've come to understa understand each other. Right, girls? she asked. Scootle swallowed nervously suddenly, but Sweetie Belle nodded enthusiastic, returning, Of course! And, it, and if he's a friend of Fluttershy, we're definitely going to behave for him. Not that we wouldn't anyway, because he's really nice. Yeah. Otherwise, he'd tell her. Scootaloo muttered weak, quietly, ears slightly back and seeming a little nervous. I blinked and looked up at the pleasantly smiling Fluttershy. I had a feeling she was hiding a great deal of depth to her now. Some of that depth might be a tad unpleasant, it seemed. <coughs> All five of us were distracted at once as another explosion of confetti went off, and Pinkie Pie tumbled past us to my right, laughing and giggling as Rainbow Dash flew after her, rolling her along the floor with her fours. We need to get Twilight down here. She's missing so much fun. Pink exclaimed as she crashed into a bookcase, knocking the old archives everywhere. My eyes widened as she was buried in a flood of books. Remember that she burst into laughter, fluttering in the air above the pile. Pinky popped out a few seconds later, laughing hysterically as well. Wow, this was going to be a mess in the morning. Fluttershy looked on apprehensively as both mares burst up the stairs. She seemed to think for a second before turning back to Eddie, however. Um, Rare, do you think you could help me keep Pinky off him for tonight? He shouldn't be standing on that hoof, she asked. Oh, good heavens, yes. In fact, now the rowdy, ma rowdy mares are off the couch, why don't you go lay down on it again? Girls, do you think you could help him over there to make sure he doesn't need to walk uh, to, about to get anything? Rarity requested, smiling down at the two young foals. <coughs> Scootaloo groaned instantly and crossed her four legs again. I am so not playing maid for klutz, she rejected. I'll help him and you, I'll help him and you can hang with me. Okay, Scootaloo? Sweetie Belle offered, smiling at her friend. Scootaloo sighed and nodded apprehensively at Sweetie and Sweetie Belle smirked. Besides, it beats holding down fabric so Rarity can cut it. Oh, but sweetie, your soft little tush is so useful for holding it in place, Rarity protested, looking amused. My eyes widened. Well, that wasn't what I was expecting. A stack of books could do the same thing. But that would damage my beautiful fabric, Rarity exclaimed, starting to looking actually horrified this time. Sooty rolled her eyes before turning back to me. See what I mean? Lead on, Mr. Pony she requested. I chuckled gently at her before giving another pat. She patted for a second before giving in and smiling up at me again. I nodded j down at her and slowly stood up, wobbling, wobbly hobbling towards the couch. Sweetie Belle traveled along to my right, seemingly ready to brace me up if I were to topple over. Thankfully it wasn't needed, and I made it to the couch with no additional bruises or fractures. I gently settled down and curled against one of the ends. The form felt a lot smaller than my last one, which was surprisingly convenient at times. Sweetie Belle hopped up on the cushion next to me, resting against my back haunch, and Scootaloo yawned before hopping up on the table and said, picking at all of the snacks. At least we can help ourselves to these, right? She pointed out, grinning. I chuckled weakly. <laughs> Indeed. Pinkies are better cooked than I gave her credit for. Uh, don't eat the rainbow cupcakes, though. Rainbow licked them. I choked before remembering that school had already laughed at me for that. Oh well. <laughs> Those two love pranks, but they're nice mares, don't worry, Sweetie Belle assured, smiling at me gently from over my back hip. Only hip? Where were the base joints from my friendly still called shoulders? I wish I'd paid attention in quadruped anatomy lessons. There was a muffled humming noise, and I glanced back towards the table. Scootaloo pondered, mouth loaded to the brim with a rainbow cupcake. What? I asked, not understanding a word of that. Hey! You'd put a cupcake that Rainbow Dash licked in your mouth? She asked, looking revolted. Scootaloo froze, staring at her for a few seconds before a light blush danced across her cheeks, and she rapidly shook her head, swallowing. Ugh, no way! You heard her, she was just kidding! She denied. 
I rolled my eyes, deciding I really didn't want to get involved in that, and closed them moments later. After a rather long day, I discovered one of the most amazing wonders of the universe was simply to lay down on something soft and rest. My mind drifted, and going the crashes and shouts from upstairs, and the two now bickering foals nearby. Admittedly, I was tired. Very, very tired. The party ebbed and flowed around me. It wasn't that I had a, that I had a, it wasn't what I had expected exactly, but not unpleasant. Pinky had gathered quite a lot, bit of attention with three or four party games that she got going after being flung down the stairs again, covered in a purple light. Pinned the tail on the pony apparently, alongside what appeared to be a grid of dots that several mares were getting tangled up on. I tend to touch them with specific hoods. There was also a strange looking game where they were spitting something around and then pouncing on each other. I decided not to get close enough to examine it, lest I be targeted. Most of the games I didn't get, but I seem to recall a beverage being served in my memory that had rather intoxicating effects. These are noticeably absent from this particular party. Maybe it was just because the younger foals are here? Maybe they didn't exist in this world. I didn't entirely feel like trying any of the games, however. From what I was told of Pinkie Pie, there would be plenty of parties for me to sample in the future. We already kept the pink one distracted for most of the night. I don't quickly recall when I heard the two fools quiet down, but the next I looked up from my mild napping, I saw they were both asleep. Sudabelle was curled up next to me using my tail as some sort of makeshift blanket, and Scootaloo was equally curled up on the table surrounded by empty cupcake wrappers. Flush, I returned later without Rarity, who was mingling. She just smiled and put a newly found blanket over me and Sweetie Belle. I returned her facial expression before curling up again. She had apparently found her own blanket and got on the other end of the couch. She was staying here? How late was it? It didn't matter at all that much, I decided as I tried to drift back to sleep, mindful of the filly tangled up in my tail. Maybe sleep would do me some good. I'm not sure when the party stopped and when it slipped into my dreams instead.